So, uh, Boris Dietrich, thank you very much for your time today. My pleasure. And could you tell me what the Dutch experience of same-sex marriage has been and have there been any problems? Well, um, when I was Member of Parliament in the Netherlands in 1994, I uh, proposed same-sex marriage in Parliament and uh, I must say that in the beginning uh, because there were no same-sex marriages anywhere in the world people said well legally you might be right but why should we be the first and why should we uh, introduce same-sex marriage what's the benefit and uh, all those kind of arguments so it took a long long time with a state commission uh, and uh, first we had registered partnership but then in the end in 2001 we implemented the same-sex marriage bill and to answer your question actually the world didn't fall apart no revolution broke out God didn't punish the Netherlands as far as I know and people are happy to get married and it's a freedom of choice uh, if you don't want to get married you don't you don't get married but if you do you can and so there is marriage equality in the Netherlands for more than 10 years now and it's functioning it's working well can LGBT people be complacent in countries such as the Netherlands where there's so much acceptance uh, I'm sorry, but what do you mean with complacent? Uh, well, they can th sit back and think, well, we've oh, got yes. enough rights now, we don't have to do anything. Well, what you saw in the Netherlands is that after the same-sex marriage bill was introduced, especially straight people thought, okay, you've got your thing and now uh, we can move forward and we can move on. And uh, there is still discrimination also in a country like the Netherlands. Um, for instance, young people feel discriminated at school, they are bullied, harassed, there are uh, higher rates of suicide among LGBT kids. Um, transgender people in the Netherlands, for instance, if they want to obtain a new identification document according to their preferred gender, the Dutch law still requires them to undergo sex reassignment surgery and they have to become uh, irreversible infertile. So Human Rights Watch uh, did research on transgender rights in the Netherlands and we asked the government to change the law because it's in violation of international human rights standards. So there's still a lot to work on and so we shouldn't fall in the trap and also in Australia not into the trap that once you have sex, uh, same-sex marriage uh, everything is okay. No, uh, emancipation is something that you have to fight for on a day basis. So you've got a fairly good overview of various countries in Europe that have allowed gay marriage now. Why did such staunch Catholic countries like Spain and Portugal and in South America, Argentina, introduce gay marriage? Why? It's actually because they realize that marriage equality is the right thing to do, that you cannot have first class and second class citizens in one country. Everybody should be treated equally. And so I'm really admiring Roman Catholic members of parliament in Argentina, in Spain and Portugal, because the Roman Catholic Church really put pressure on them and said, uh, listen, if you vote for the same-sex marriage bill, we can ostracize you. We can." Uh, send you away from the Roman Catholic Church and still those members of Parliament, Roman Catholic members of Parliament voted in favor of the same-sex marriage bill because they knew it's the right thing to do. They wanted to be on the right side of history. In Australia it seems that our Prime Minister wants to uh, pander to the Catholic right wing in uh, not allowing or not supporting same-sex marriages. What would you have to say to that? Well. Very interestingly, there are many uh, members of parliament in the Netherlands, Roman Catholic members of parliament, who voted against the same-sex marriage bills. Several of them, by the way, voted in favor. But I've spoken to several of them uh, who were against the same-sex marriage bill, and they now say, after they have seen how committed same-sex couples are and how happy they are uh, being able to get married, that they now say, I don't understand why I was led by fear and why I thought that the institution of marriage would uh, you know, be um, diminished because of same-sex couples uh, being able to get married. They now say, I'm in favor of it and I changed my opinion. So uh, people, um, you know, they develop 
and they see the benefits of same-sex marriage and they can change their minds. What's the difference between gay marriage and civil partnerships as we know from, say, the UK? Are they both equal? Well, in the Netherlands we do have uh, um, a marriage. Actually, the term same-sex marriage is wrong because there is only one marriage and that's open to straight and heterosexual couples. But we do also have what we call registered partnership or civil unions. In the Netherlands, the big difference is actually when you want to break up the relationship. Uh, a civil union or registered partnership when you want to uh, break up you go to the municipality register and you just file um, um, some forms uh, but when you are married and you want to break up the relationship you need to go to court and the judge is the one who dissolves uh, marriage. Um, in a country like the Netherlands uh, straight couples can have civil unions but also um, gay couples but in uh, the UK for instance um, the civil unions are not open to heterosexual couples so it's a thing what we call separate but almost equal but it's only for gay couples and it's a separate uh, uh, judicial institution. So it's uh, sort of like the poor brother or poor sister to uh, gay marriage, uh, civil partnerships? Yes, it's, it's a lesser form and so people don't feel happy about it because they still feel a second-class citizen. They don't have all the rights and obligations that go with uh, same-sex marriage. What would you say to an Australian politician who hasn't made up their mind yet on the issue of gay marriage? Well, uh, go and travel to countries where same-sex marriage is already uh, institutionalized, like Argentina, like Spain, Portugal, the Netherlands, Belgium, Canada, South Africa. Uh, go there and see for yourself um, that it's beneficial also for society when two people love and care for each other that they can be recognized by the law just like anybody else uh, with their uh, relationship and actually it has also some economical benefits. Lastly, Africa is perhaps one of the most difficult places in the world at the moment in terms of same-sex rights. How do you view the debate on that and do you see gay marriage coming in Africa in the future? No, in Africa, most African countries, but also in the Caribbean and some Asian countries, same-sex behavior is criminalized, so people can end up in prison simply because they love somebody of the same sex. And that's very worrisome, like countries like Cameroon or Uganda, uh, Cameroon, people, um, you know, uh, will be arrested by the police because somebody tells on them that they are gay or lesbian and they can get a prison sentence of a maximum five years simply because they are gay. Um, so in those countries, activists do not even think about same-sex marriage. It's, it's not important to them. They want to live freely. They don't want to get arrested. They don't want to get tortured. They want to be protected by their governments and by uh, the police and not blackmailed by the police or harassed. Does the West have a, a duty then to, I guess, be a beacon of hope to these countries? Well, it's not a, in terms of the West or the North versus the South because we are talking about human rights. And human rights are universal and so we don't want to fall into the trap of some African politicians who say that uh, they need to criminalize homosexual conduct because it's behavior that is introduced by the West in Africa, which is of course not true. Uh, human rights are universal and they apply to straight people but also to heterosexual people. Doesn't um, culture or religion or tradition isn't stronger than the universality of human rights. Human rights are for everybody day and night. Is there anything else you'd like to add? I really hope that Australia um, will join uh, the group of countries that have introduced same-sex marriage because Australia is seen in the rest of the world as a progressive country which values non-discrimination and tolerance and so I hope that um, Australia will be next. It will be of uh, highly symbolical value also for the whole Asia-Pacific region once Australia has introduced same-sex marriage. So I really hope that it's going to be in the next country on uh, the list. Boris Dietrich, thank you very much.
Your most welcome.